From teaching in the classrooms of Morocco to delivering solar wings to the International Space Station, NASA astronaut Ricky Arnold's career trajectory has been as out of this world as his 12 hours of spacewalks. And it's our absolute pleasure to have Ricky join us now in studio. Such an honor to meet you and to have you here today. Oh, it's been great to be here. The energy in this place is phenomenal. Well, great. Okay, yeah. we will get to your lessons in space keynote address in a moment. Sure. But I do want to get started with what's dominated the headlines recently, and it's coming from outer space. Right. Your reaction to seeing fellow astronauts safe return after spending an unexpected amount of time in space. You're, you're always happy to see your friends get home, uh, regardless of what happened. Um, Sonny and Butch had, a, had an interesting journey. I can't think of two people better prepared to, to deal with that. Wow. Um, I can't speak to how they personally felt, but I have, I have a suspicion that while they were disappointed they didn't get to execute the mission that was initially planned right. for them, the minute they realized that that mission wasn't going to be complete and they had a new mission, they were entirely focused on completing that mission successfully. As someone who has has literally been in their shoes and been to outer space and, and made the safe return home, you watching and with your expertise and everything that you know, are you holding your breath like the rest of us waiting for their safe return, hoping that everything works out you know, perfectly? Or do you kind of know in the back of your mind, they're going to be okay? We make spaceflight look really easy. Every mission, mission in, includes a, some element of a miracle, right? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not sitting there with bated breath expecting something bad to happen, but when, when they splashed down, um, I was as joyful as the dolphins <laughs> swimming around them, I mean, for that sure. looked like a Hollywood movie. It did, it perfectly did. Perfectly yeah. scripted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going to have great post-flight videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do want to talk about what things are like when they do come home. What is that reconditioning process like for them? They were without gravity for a long time. Yeah, yeah, they were nine months. We've had folks longer than that. Yeah. Uh, Frank Rubio was up there for well over a year. Scott Kelly was up there for nearly a year. I was up there myself for seven months. So when they landed, you know, they get initial uh, checkout with the doctors. They fly back to Houston. They're pretty much greeted by a medical team um, and uh, they begin the rehabilitation process. It was about 24 hours where I felt like a little out of sorts at what? the end of 20 dizzy okay. tired is it um, weird to walk on earth again oh yeah i mean yeah, yeah you're you, trying to get your earth legs back yeah, exa exactly <laughs> okay. that's a, a great way of putting it yeah. so let me ask you you're preparing for you know a spacewalk you're preparing to, right. to head into outer space you're only supposed to be there for eight days it right. turns into nine months yeah is this something that in the back of your mind, you, mind you know that there's always that possibility or you get up there and they say, hey, we can't bring you home, it might be several months. Uh, when I launched in the shuttle, we had two delays launching. Um, one was a month, one was four days. Uh, when I launched on a Soyuz, the day before I launched, my boss came up to me and said, you're not gonna be home in August, you're gonna be home in October sometime. So it is always, that's part of the deal. And, uh, uh, you prepare yourself uh, mentally, you try to prepare your family. That's really the, it's the family stuff that is challenging. The, the, when you prepare for being away a couple of weeks versus several months, um, your approach is definitely different. Incredible. Okay, I want to talk about your career a sure. little bit. You didn't start off as a NASA astronaut. No. You started off in the teaching realm. Yes. Did you always want to be a teacher? I, no, I did not. Um, before I went to graduate school, I was working at the Naval Academy uh, in the Marine Science Department. I thought I kind of wanted to be a scientist and it was there that I decided I'm gonna go back and, and get my teaching credential and started teaching in public schools in Maryland and science and math and kind of carried me around the world. And then literally, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then out of the literally, yeah. What made you want to transition from teaching and from your role as an educator to an, an astronaut? Yeah, I, I would like to say that was planned. Um, <laughs> I remember sitting at my desk uh, between classes once and thinking about, is this something I'd least like to apply for? Because you're always telling your students, you know, you, you need to challenge yourself. You need to try things. You need to let someone else tell you no. Uh, there wasn't an opportunity uh, to apply at that point. A couple of years later, um, NASA put out a call saying we're hiring new um, a new class of astronauts and we want educators to apply as well. Oh. And I applied with absolutely no expectation that this was going to unfold the way it had. Uh, I was uh, looking forward to having a great framed rejection letter hanging, <laughs> hanging in my office, but it is, it is, it's been a real gift to have been given the opportunity I was given. Yeah. Why do you think they were seeking educators for that class and what do you think your experience as an educator brought to the table as an astronaut? I, I think NASA recognizes the future of the space program 
is in the classrooms of the people at this conference. For me, I found that the number one skill a really effective teacher has is, is multitasking. Hmm. You have 20 to 30 individuals uh, with different needs, different experiences, and you have to meet each individual where they are simultaneously if you're gonna be effective. And that ability to, to monitor a lot of data inputs, which is what they're doing, and then planning a course of action really served me well, I think, in, in the astronaut office. That's cool. You mentioned, you know, the next generation of astronauts is right. sitting in these science classes right, right now. Right. What would your advice be to teachers to cultivate that level of intrigue and curiosity to get those kids to that level? I, I think I like that, that joy of co-discovery. That's what I remember most about some of my science and math teachers that you felt like you were learning alongside them. That was just always so powerful to me as a student. Your keynote address here at NSTA is yeah. lessons from space. Right. What lessons did we learn? I, I wanted to share some of the technical part, but really the human side and what it's like to be on a team of six people, 200 some miles above the earth for six months together while life is unfolding Right. for your families and loved ones down below. Uh, what, is, what is that like and what skills do you need to be successful in that? How do you develop those skills? And the lesson I shared, I think, was that there's an intentional approach to that, right? We, we, you know, working to be a better human is, it's, it's work. It, um, and uh, they're sitting with all, <laughs> they're sitting with our future in their classroom. Yeah and thinking about, well, what is, how's is the next generation gonna to work together to solve some of our global challenges? And um, yeah, it was, it was a really nice, nice time to spend with the, with the, the conference attendees today. Wonderful, well, it right. is a tall task that these teachers have ahead of them. It is, and, but boy, you can tell you're in a conference, conference hall full of, full of teachers, educators who are passionate about what they do, care deeply about their students, and are really working to, uh, to a better future for all of us. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for of your time course, today. Thank you so Appreciate much. Appreciate all your insights and knowledge and oh. really for you being here to inspire oh, these teachers. It's an honor to be here. Looking for more science education content? Click right here to find the NSTA TV playlist and enjoy.